Hey guys, this is Malinki. Welcome back to my channel, Voice of Malinki. Today we will talk about Ogenesis. And if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And if you like my video, please do like, comment and share my video. So the process of egg production in the female gonads is called Ogenesis. This is the process of production of eggs in female gonads. So female gonads are basically pair of ovaries. So oogenesis takes place inside pair of ovaries. Now I am zooming this ovary. Two ovaries are present here. So I am zooming this part. Okay. Now each ovary is divided into two zones. One is the peripheral zone. That is called cortex. So this is the periphery. That is the surface. Surface of the ovary is called cortex and another zone is there that is the inner zone that is medulla. Now oogenesis occurs in cortex. Okay. So basically oogenesis begins in females before they are even born. Now during early fetal development, oogenesis begins with female germ cells and female germ cells are oogonia. So oogenesis begins with oogonia that contains diploid to a number of chromosomes. Ogonia are basically stem cells. They are stem cells. They undergo mitosis to increase in numbers. So number of Ogonia are now produced. They ensure a constant supply of oogonia to run oogenesis. Remember one thing that no more oogonia are formed after birth. No more oogonia will be formed after birth. So before birth only in the embryonic stages this thing occurs. Some of the ogonia undergo differentiation. Some of them, some of them undergo differentiation to produce primary oocytes. So differentiation means it's just little bit developmental changes. Developmental changes occur in some of the ogonia and they are called primary oocytes. Primary oocytes are also deployed like oogonia. They are also 2N. Primary oocytes, what they do? They then enter prophase of meiosis 1. They enter prophase of meiosis 1 during fetal development. But they do not complete the phase that is the meiosis 1 phase until after puberty. So each primary oocyte then gets surrounded by a single layer of granulosa cells. Single layer of granulosa cells are there which are surrounding the primary oocyte. 
it is called primary follicle now till this part everything is happening inside the ovary of a embryo now the baby girl comes out of her mother's womb and born in the world with this primary follicle so what will happen then now a large number of these follicles these primary follicles degenerate during the phase from birth to her puberty large number of primary follicles will die therefore at puberty only 60000 to 80000 primary follicles are left in each ovary but otherwise no change will occur in these primary follicles okay now when the girl reaches its puberty stage when the girl reaches its puberty stage something will start to happen each month after puberty until menopause two hormones these are two gonadotrophins those are fsh follicle stimulating hormone and lh luteinizing hormones these two hormones are secreted by the anterior pituitary these hormones further stimulate the development of these primary follicles although only one only one will reach the maturity stage so only one primary follicle will reach the maturity stage in every month after puberty let's see what happens the primary follicle gets surrounded by more layer of granulosa cells and stromal cells form an outer layer that layer is called theca folliculi right and this entire structure is called secondary follicle these surrounding cells these stromal cells and granulosa cells they nourish the developing oocyte so what we have seen in primary follicle that only one layer of granulosa cells are present around the primary oocyte now when fsh and lh acts on that primary follicle multiple layers of granulosa cells will surround the primary oocyte and stromal cells will surround them and they will form the theca folliculi and the entire structure is now called secondary follicle the secondary follicle soon transforms into tertiary follicle which is characterized by a fluid filled cavity that is antrum antrum is the fluid filled cavity the theca layer is now organized into an theca interna that is the internal layer of theca and theca externa that is the external layer of theca at this stage the primary oocyte within the tertiary follicle grows in size and completes its first meiosis division first meiotic division or meiosis 1 now it is an unequal division that results in the formation of a large haploid secondary oocyte this is the haploid cell 
because it comes after meiosis 1. So it is large secondary oocyte and a tiny cell that is fast polar body. This is very tiny cell. This is the fast polar body. This is the unequal division because secondary oocyte and fast polar body are not equal in size. Secondary oocyte is larger. Fast polar body is smaller. Now this fast polar body will get degenerated. It will die. The tertiary follicle further changes into graphene follicle. The secondary oocyte, so this is the secondary oocyte we have seen here. It is the larger cell. It forms a new glycoprotein layer that is this one that is called zona pellucida. It is the layer of glycoprotein. Zona pellucida surrounds the secondary oocyte. Now the secondary oocyte begins meiosis 2 but then stops in metaphase stage. It will not complete the meiosis 2. Instead, it will stop in the metaphase stage. Now, the graphene follicle now ruptures to release the secondary oocyte that is called ovum. It will release the ovum or secondary oocyte from the ovary and this process is called ovulation.